This is where things get a little bit more complicated as we start to talk about how to navigate buildings, structures and training units in Stormgate. There are two ways to do it, the quick macro panel and the more traditional way. But I would generally recommend if you're looking to play casually Stormgate, maybe for the cooperative mode, perhaps the macro panel could be useful for you. But if you are looking to develop your skills in a more refined way, you want to conquer that rank ladder. I think the more traditional way is going to be suited to you. The quick macro panel is the simpler of the two options if you're new to real-time strategy games and here's how it works. As you will see on the bottom right there are five icons behind which are five sub menus of selections. These menus are build structures, train units, train units advanced, upgrades and upgrades advanced. The menus are pretty self-explanatory and if you use this method I would highly recommend you use the assigned hotkeys QWERT to navigate your way through them. Now whilst we haven't yet talked about hotkeys, to briefly introduce it here, a hotkey is a keyboard shortcut for a command. For example, in this scenario, pressing Q on your keyboard will select the first quick macro panel submenu of build structures. Subsequently, pressing W will take you to the train units menu and you can keep going through the menus in that way. Notice the letters on the icons within each menu also. Whenever you see a letter over a button or an icon, it generally means it's a hotkey for that button or the icon. To really quicken things up, you can use the hotkeys to select both the quick macro panel menu and then also a unit, structure or the research that you want to select. An example of this would be making a habitat as the Vanguard faction where you can simply press the Q button, subsequently the S button and then click on your left mouse button where you want to place the habitat on the map. Another example would be pressing W and then A in order to train a worker. Now I know it might seem like a small detail but trust me when I say in the long run it will save you a lot of time when things are in the heat of battle in the online multiplayer game modes. One thing to note with the quick macro panel is that the worker used to build any structure that is selected will be selected automatically and whilst it will usually be a worker that's close by there's no guarantee it seems as though Stormgate really prioritizes picking the bob or imp worker that is the least active at the moment. To go through the second and more traditional real-time strategy method of navigating building of structures and training units in Stormgate, essentially you need to select a worker and then actually select the building you want to construct and then click it on your map. You will need to give the worker a shift command after placing the building however so that the worker automatically goes on to a new task whether that be collecting resources or constructing something else. To do this, simply press and hold shift when the building foundation has been placed and then right click the worker to its next task. To train lancers, you'll first have to select a barracks and then train the lancers from there. Similarly, for upgrades you'll need to select the specific upgrades building and then select the upgrade that you wish to research. You might be wondering why you'd want to use this more traditional method of controlling your game pieces in Stormgate and well, I imagine it will mostly come down to familiarity if you've played real-time strategy games before. However, there's a little bit of nuance. Playing Stormgate competitively, you might actually want this extra control and be very particular about which worker you use to construct and which buildings you use to train your units and which particular buildings you use to get your upgrades. But the biggest advantage of using the more traditional way is probably going to be the fact that you can select multiple bobs if you're the Vanguard faction to build a structure at the same time. Bear in mind you can still do that with the quick macro panel but it's a little bit more tedious. You'll have to place the building and then once the building foundations are started to construct then pull extra bob workers to start helping. In order to select the abilities of your units and structures, no matter which method you use, you will need to first select the unit or structure that is capable of that ability and then select the ability from the options in the bottom right. So now, something very important to note regardless of which method you are using is that at times not all possible options of units, buildings or upgrades will be available for you to select. There are two main reasons for this. Firstly, you need to actually have the resources available to pay for the units, structures or upgrades that you want to select. If you try and select something that you just can't afford, well, it just won't register and you'll get a notification saying not enough Luminite or not enough Ethereum, whichever resource that you're lacking. And secondly, most units, buildings or upgrades are locked behind having certain structures already deployed. Naturally, units to be trained will be locked behind the specific building that it is accessible from. For example, you will need at least a barracks in order to train a Lancer or Exo, at least a mech bay to train a Hedgehog or Vulcan, and at least a hangar bay in order to train a Hornet or Sentinel. Be sure to notice how I said at least a barracks, at least a mech bay, and at least a hangar bay. The reason for this is that whilst some units like the Lancer and Scout only require the building that they are made from being present in order to be selectable, 
many other units need more than just one structure. For example, whilst the EXO is made from the barracks, to be able to train an EXO, you will also need to have a biokinetics lab already built. Another example is the Vulcan that is made from the mech bay, which also requires you to have gotten a tier 2 command post upgrade. So we've discussed how units are locked behind having certain structures, but the same applies to certain structures as well. So for example, in order to build a mech bay, you must already have a barracks. What this translates to overall is that in order to make a hedgehog, you'll first need to have a barracks and then have a mech bay. In order to train a Vulcan, you'll need the barracks which unlocks the mech bay and then have also gotten a tier 2 command post upgrade. Not to mention, of course, you'll actually need all the resources for all of these. We've talked a lot about unlocking things, I hope you have enough keys, but with regards to upgrades, the last part of this section is to mention that upgrades that you might wish to research are also locked behind certain structures. For example, the Biokinetics Lab offers all the upgrades for, well, your biokinetic units, and also the Machine Lab offers all of the upgrades for your machine-based units. Now we won't go into all the details of all of these upgrades or exactly all the requirements that you need for every unit, every building in this particular video. That will be better placed for dedicated faction overview videos later on in this beginner's guide. Suffice it to say that you need to know that this exists. Ultimately, whilst it might seem a bit overwhelming, trust me when I say give it a few games and you'll get the hang of it. Bear in mind also, you won't need to actually remember all of this. You simply need to hover your mouse over whatever it is you want to train, to build or upgrade and the tooltip will tell you exactly what you need. Next it's important to touch upon queues. In Stormgate you can queue your production buildings and research facilities to build several units one after another, often to a maximum of five items in each queue. Now this can be both good and bad. The good thing is that this will help you keep your production and research facilities always active but the bad is that once you have queued up a unit or research, it will charge you for the required resources. Now the reason why this is significant is that a production building or research facility can only work on one selected item at a time. Bearing in mind that in real time strategy games that time is of the essence, you might be better placed in having multiple of the same production facilities working to spend your resources rather than just one. It really does depend on how strong your economy is, but take this example. Say you have enough Luminite to train two Lancers, each Lancer takes 26 seconds to train, and so you could queue up a Lancer in two separate barracks buildings to give you two Lancers made and ready to go in 26 seconds. Alternatively, you could queue up two Lancers from one barracks, which would then need 52 seconds in total for both Lancers to be ready and good to go. The difference, of course, in the first scenario is that you would need the second barracks to have already been built, and that, of course, takes resources. If you are using the quick macro panel, selecting multiple of the same unit to be produced will spread the queue over all of the relevant production buildings that you have. If however you are using the more traditional method of training units, well you'll need to select the specific production building from which you wish to train your units and there are quick and easy ways to do that, however that is explained in the control groups video later on in this Stormgate beginners guide series. Now, in order to cancel a unit that you have selected to train, you can simply click with your left mouse button the icon of what is being trained on the command card or press Y on your keyboard with the producing structure already selected. In order to cancel a structure that has been ordered to be built, well, if the foundations have not yet been placed by your worker, then you can select that worker and task it to do something else before the foundations are placed. If the foundations have already been placed, well then you can select the structure icon with the left mouse button on the command card. If you are not using the quick macro panel, then you can select the foundation of the structure and then left click with your mouse button on the icon of the structure on the command card. Alternatively, you can press Y on your keyboard whilst the structure foundation is selected. It's a similar process when cancelling upgrades, or when you want to cancel multiple units that have been queued. Now you've made it this far and there's plenty more information I would love to share with you about Stormgate. If you want to see the rest of the Beginner's Guide series, click on the end card screen right now. Take care and see you next time.